Another fine day here on the farm amid the chaos of the world. And today is what we call the Great Equipment Move Day, or the Equipment Migration, where we move the fall stuff kind of out of the back part of the shed here, at least the combine anyways, which is still here. And we'll get that to our other shed and bring home some of the spring equipment that we need to get ready yet. So that is today. We'll see how long that takes and if it gets done in a normal amount of time, then uh, I might actually even attempt to try to get the front tank for the starter fertilizer on our planter tractor. And uh, make sure it all works and then sadly, likely unhook the planter because we might end up having to use big to the both big tractors here this spring before we get into planting corn so uh, it's a bit of a process but uh, we can manage and just sometimes I get lazy and don't want to unhook stuff but I think we will this year so equipment migration <laughs> Now if I'm smart, I will remember to take the GPS off the combine before I take it to the other shed. Combines going into storage for the springtime until July 1st, probably when I actually harvest my winter canola. And I will take you to see that at some point. But uh, Jessica and I are doing this. Uh, she's behind me in the 8R uh, to help move some stuff around. And uh, first trip to the other shed to move equipment. <laughs> I didn't crash. You didn't crash. There's no would, cars outside. So it ain't. is probably the best time to move equipment For because real. no one is. I think we saw two people. Driving on the road, we met what? One car? Two cars? Two one cars. car? Two cars. Oh, the guy. But usually the road that we come down here is quite busy. So. I remember the first time I drove down there, I was like panic attack after panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> so my co-op student is backing up the tractor to the shed here where we have the rest of our equipment and i'll show you what that is i think most of you seen it when i did my equipment tour but yeah it's packed a lot of stuff i forgot we had in here oh crap so this is tallyhand there's my brother's actually for the chicken farm that is here we're gonna grab the joker Take it home, uh, we'll have to move the buggy out. And a few other things to get what we want in. I forgot, we got, oh, these here from when the tarp blew off and some other stuff. So we'll get it uh, packed up and put away.
Just like so, Bobby Joe. Just getting the fleet home. And we'll work at maybe getting service today or washing them. I don't know what we'll do. But it's a lot easier when you have a helping hand. So the mass equipment migration has concluded. We moved a whole bunch of stuff around and tried to get all the fall stuff that we won't need right away, kind of back at the back of the shed. And spring stuff, either home or it is uh, in front. So the strip freshener that we built last year is sitting here. I'm not sure if we're gonna use it this year. We'll have to see how it goes. So far the spring looks nice, so I'm thinking we might not need it. And then. Behind us, I got the Deep Ripper back there at the back. And as you can see, the combine's there and the buggy's there. So, good to go. We don't have room for everything at home, so we'll try to put inside what we can. But, that's got her looked after. You didn't wreck anything? Almost, almost. almost. We'll be out. It's weird, I'm actually going to get parts for the first time in a little while and uh, I know I shouldn't be doing it while I'm driving but there's no one on the road. No, that's not a good reason. But yeah, I haven't been to the town that we get all our stuff in uh, for two months. So it's kind of a weird going down these roads because I've not gone down them for a while. So a little surreal. Doing some fall cleanup still. Those wagons went way dirty and uh, instead of trying to clean them up when it was wet and cold out in late December, early January, we shoved them in the shed and just left them there. So now that we have some nice weather today, we're gonna get them cleaned up because we've got all the equipment moved home. So Jess and Sandy are working at that and I'm working on my tender for my sprayer that uh, I use and that you've seen in other videos but uh, we gotta get it set up to do 28 because I actually mix sulfur and 28% together into the tanks on the tender here uh, so it's pre-mixed so when I do in 28 I can just come in quick with the sprayer fill up and go again so gotta put the pump on and the inductor and stuff like that so I'm gonna get this set up so it's good to go. Well, got the uh, tender ready to go. Jess is still washing wagons.
It's the last set of two that need washed and they're all washed up. Right behind me are running gear. Uh, I got them last fall to put different gravity boxes on this newer gear because uh, the ones that they're on are quite old and a little a little decrepit. So I just got to make them the right length. They're actually too long right now. They're 11 feet something. They need to be nine something. I got to find my tape measure. But I'm just going to shorten them up and then we're going to put a couple uh, our underberth or yeah our underberth boxes on top of those ones and then I'll take the running gear from the underberth and put a couple old J&M boxes on them and then things are a little bit more respectable uh, and roadworthy uh, and safe safe is good I'm all done. Let's drive over the top of it. There you go. Jumping around all over today. We got it, these wagon boxes we're going to take off and put on the running gear over there. But first off, we have to undo some stuff here that holds it on to this running gear. I can focus in down yonder. And over here, some kind of chains that keep it on. So we'll get those off and uh, get those running gear on the other, other, get the wagons on the other running gear, the boxes. Now we'll see how we make it with precision. Those are loose off the running gear and that's the new one. Hopefully I can line things up. Pretty good, a little fine tuning, but uh, not bad. <laughs> 